Go Inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Gary Harris. You're looking live at Brian Denny Stadium, home of 13 national championships, and this afternoon it's the home of our show as well. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome into the Tider Insider Signing Day Special. Alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com, I'm Gary Harris. As always, Rodney, it has been a hectic day. You and I were talking earlier. Always surprises, always a little bit of drama on National Signing Day, maybe though as much today as we can remember in a long time. Oh, absolutely, Gary. When you consider the things we're going to talk about later about Cyrus Quanjo, his commitment to Auburn, and now it's in question as to whether or not he'll actually sign with Auburn. And, you know, certainly haven't had quite the signing day like this one in a long time. Maybe never. All right, well, let's get to it. First, let's start with some good news that came in early this morning. Alabama got the signature of Jeffrey Pagan, the outstanding defensive end out of Asheville, North Carolina, originally a Florida commitment, then a Clemson commitment. Then he said he would decide between Georgia and Alabama. You predicted in your crystal ball last night it would be Alabama, and indeed the tie comes through with this outstanding prospect. Yeah, he is an outstanding prospect, Gary. You know, it, I, I don't want to say his stock dropped, but certainly with the knee injury that he incurred during the season that required surgery, it wasn't an ACL, it was MCL and a PCL injury that was repaired. And and I think that, that, that you know, maybe his stock dropped a little bit in some eyes, but I'm telling you, he's one of the t elite defensive linemen prospects in the country. He's from Asheville, North Carolina. As you mentioned, he was originally committed to Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators and then switched to Clemson. And, you know, it was really a close call between Alabama and Georgia, but a family member told us yesterday they thought it would be Alabama, and that's why we went with it. And the good news continued in Russellville, the curious case of Brent Callaway took its final twist this morning. He originally committed to Alabama over a year ago, then at the uh, U.S. Army All-American game. He put on an Auburn hat. It looked like it was going to be Auburn, but this morning, as you see there on your monitor, he switched back to Alabama. And afterwards, he talked about his final decision and a recent conversation he had with Alabama head coach Nick Saban. He said, if my heart's not in, in not in Alabama, then I don't need to come. He said, if, if, if I feel like the school's for me, then be here. He said, but uh, either way I go, they're going to be with me 100%. They, they weren't mad at me when I switched. You know, uh, I did handle it in a way that could have been kind of disrespectful, maybe. And I apologize for that, but I feel like, uh, I feel like they wouldn't, they wouldn't, there was no grief there. You know? All right, Rodney, Brent Callaway says that Nick Saban was really honest with him. He said, you know, if your heart's not in Alabama, then go somewhere else. But after thinking about it, after talking it over with his family, we know that his family wanted him to go to the University of Alabama, that's where he signed this morning. Here's well, Gary, I, first of all, he was committed to Alabama for two years, so I think that's clear. That's where his heart was all along. I think there was some late confusion. Auburn's success played into it this season, and I also think the fact that, uh, you know, they won the national championship and that type of thing kind of was an emotional thing for him, and I think there was some influence and some pressure from those close to him. His high school coach certainly pushed him to Auburn. I, there's no question about that. But I think in the end, he went back to what he originally wanted to do, and that was to sign with Alabama. So Alabama gets Callaway, they get Pagan, and now we move to Cyrus Quanjo, which has become the recruiting story, not only of the day, but the year. Uh, last night, you said it was probably too close to call. This morning on national television, the younger brother of Alabama offensive tackle, Ari Quanjo, announced that he was going to sign with Auburn University. It looked like that story was over, but really, there have been some dramatic turns of events. Well, we talked to Coach Bill McGregor at DeMatha High School, the school where Cyrus Quanjo has played the last three years. And, you know, Gary, as it stands now, he did not sign his letter of intent with Auburn, nor did he, obviously, if he didn't sign it, he didn't fax it. But, uh, you know, that's kind of where it stands right now. He's, he's, he's confused, and I think the family uh, prefers that he go to Alabama. I think that Ari, uh, rather Cyrus has been leaning to Alabama for, for, for a year now since Ari signed with Alabama. So, again, I think that's kind of where it stands. We'll have to see how it plays out. Coach McGregor told me it could be another day or two. We'll just have to see how it goes. But nothing expected to happen today? As far as we know at this point. All right. So the Cyrus Quanjo story will continue. It's, uh, it's unbelievable at this point. 
what has happened there. But again, we're talking about a major decision, not only for the young man, but his family as well. Obviously, it impacts two schools, Alabama and Auburn, heavily. Now, let's move on to Isaiah Kroll, the running back out of Carver High School in Columbus, Georgia. Down to Alabama and Georgia, we felt like for quite a while that it was going to be Georgia. Alabama recruited uh, him very diligently, did a great job, but in the end, he went with the home state Bulldogs, a school he grew up going to. Well, and I think there was a point in time that maybe Alabama did have a slight lead, Gary. Uh, but, but, you know, that was earlier on. We've talked about it repeatedly on our show for several weeks. I've said that I felt like in the end he would end up at Georgia because that's a school he always dreamed of playing for and lifelong favorite. And, you know, last night about 8.30 or 9 o'clock after our show, the talk started heating up that he was going to Alabama. He was going to pull the surprise. But, you know, we stuck with our uh, pick that he would end up at Georgia, and that's what he did today. All right, let's talk about a couple of guys that had been committed to Alabama for a long time. But going into National Signing Day, there was some, their statuses were up in the air. Let's begin with LaMichael Fanny, the big defensive lineman out of the state of Georgia. Auburn uh, had uh, made a late push there. In the end, though, he stuck with the tie. And, and I felt like he would. We said that last night on the show on, on our crystal ball report that we felt like LaMichael would stick with Alabama. Again, he's been committed since April the 17th of last year on 8A, and, and I felt like he you know, strongly favored Alabama. He had a great relationship with Kirby Smart and the Alabama coaching staff, and you know, I felt like that he, he all, all along felt that this was the place for him. He's an outstanding prospect, Gary. He's raw, very, very raw player, but he has all the tools to be an outstanding defensive lineman, 6'6", 280 speed, athletic ability. So, again, I think he's a big pickup for Alabama. Wide receiver Darrell Collins out of Gadsden City. This was a case where he'd been a long time commitment to Alabama, maybe a, a, a numbers crunch situation. The tie coaches asked him to gray shirt. He considered that strongly, but he had other options like Louisville and Kentucky. And this afternoon, he indeed signs with Kentucky, where he'll play immediately and probably have a chance to impact their football team. Yeah, he will, and I think he's a good fit for Kentucky, Gary, and what they do and how they do with their receivers, and I think he probably feels really comfortable there. I, I know that they really wanted him. They recruited him hard. And, you know, now he's got an opportunity to go in next fall rather than having a gray shirt. So it's good for Darrell Collins. Now, you don't rank recruiting classes primarily because you, you focus strictly on the University of Alabama, but those that do have the tide ranked very high right now. Scout.com has Alabama checking in at number eight. Rivals right now has the tide at number one, and ESPN has Alabama at number three. Of course, Juan Joe, if he were to flip to Alabama, could uh, really inflate those rankings even more, although it rivals with, at number one. So anyway, you you uh, stack it up, it's going to be a top 10 class, in most cases a top five class. Yeah, and I think when you look at it, Gary, you're talking about on the offensive line, you know, obviously we're still waiting on Quanjo, but they probably got one of the best tackle available out there in junior college player Aaron Douglas, who's already enrolled in school. You look on the defensive line, you know, I think it's it, a tremendous class when you look at Jesse Williams, Quentin Dial, the two junior college players that are already enrolled. As Xavier Dixon could play linebacker. I think he ultimately ends up on the defensive line. Now Jeffrey Pagan, when he's healthy, he's an outstanding prospect. So, you know, there's some other guys too, Quentin Dial, as we mentioned. But, uh, you know, again, I think when you look at the class overall, it's, it's you know, it's right there. It's got to be in the top three or four as they rank them. All right, a lot more to come on this Tider Insider Signing Day Special. Up next, we knew Tuscaloosa's Vinny Sinceri would sign at his home base of Northridge High School, but as it turns out, he brought along a future teammate to do the same. And still to come, you're looking live at the Naylor Stone Media Room inside the Malmore Athletic Complex. That's where at 4 o'clock, Nick Saban will address the media. We'll carry his press conference live in its entirety. You're watching the Tider Insider Signing Day Special. Welcome back, everybody, to the zone inside Bryant Denny Stadium. The Tider Insider Signing Day Special continues live. Now, you know all about early enrollees. It's happening all over the country where players sign or players commit, and then they graduate early and actually enroll at the university. That's what happened with several Alabama commitments, including a local product, Vinny Sinceri of Northridge High School. Well, he held a signing ceremony at his high school this morning anyway, and he brought along a guest. Fellow linebacker Trey DePriest. Trey is from Ohio, so obviously he couldn't be at his high school. Both players are already enrolled at UA, but they went through the procedure, putting pen to paper this morning. They're good friends, and uh, Sinceri said he was thrilled to have DePriest be part of his signing day ceremony. We, we first met in the combine down in Orlando for the Under Armour game, and uh, we just kind of hit it off after that. I mean, he was not going to go home and sign or not do anything, and I knew it was important to him. I know his mom and everybody would want to see him sign, and 
he's my buddy, so I couldn't leave him out. So I had to ask him if he wanted to come over here and sign with little old me. Man, we met at the, uh, the first uh, Under Armour All-American Combine. I was standing behind him in line, and I read his sweatshirt, and, and I said, is Coach Sal your dad? I said he was recruiting me, and then we just been cool ever since. And then that was my roommate and, um, at the game, and then we just then we came, came here a few days later, and that's my roommate now, and it's just we, we cool. Well, Rodney, Sinceri, and Dupreeze, both uh, early enrollees, so we've talked a lot about them on our regular Tider Insider program, you on your website. But a guy that Alabama went down to the wire with was Xavier Dixon. Defensive end, pass rushing type player out of the state of Georgia. He gave Georgia strong consideration, but at the Under Armour All-American game, he chose the Tide. And, and talk about this pickup. This is a guy who could play early. Extremely athletic, recruited by Sal Sinceri. In fact, Vinny's father, the assistant here at Alabama. And a very athletic kid, Gary. There you see him rushing the passer. That's what he brings is that speed, that quickness, the ability to, you know, pressure the quarterback. And, uh, you know, just I, I think personally, and, and I talked about the defensive lineman earlier. I don't know if I mentioned him, but he's certainly a guy that could make a strong impact there. I know that he also may get a look at the Jack linebacker spot. But, again, he is a guy that's going to bring a lot of speed and athleticism to that defense. Yeah, as good as Alabama was on defense last season, pass rushing, particularly off the edge, was a concern. Xavier Dixon might be the answer. Well, still to come, we'll take uh, you over to the Malmore Athletic Complex right around 4 o'clock for the Nick Saban press conference. But on the way, we'll talk about some guys that could possibly make an immediate impact. We already touched on Xavier Dixon. What about uh, Hasin Clinton Dixon, D. Hart? Will we see them on the field next season? We'll talk about it. Stay tuned. You're watching the... TITV signing day special live from Brian Denny Stadium right here on WBUA. Welcome back to the signing day special. We're coming to you live from the zone inside Brian Denny Stadium. Rodney, let's talk about uh, the junior college players Alabama has signed. This is a program traditionally has not hit the junior college ranks very heavily, but when you get an opportunity to sign three players like Jesse Williams, Aaron Douglas, and Quentin Dial, you, you have to take advantage of it. Well, Jesse Williams, we talked about him last night being the number one junior college defensive player in the country, number one overall player in the country in junior college. and uh, Outstanding player, Gary gives Alabama that big presence in the middle uh, of the defensive line. He's athletic enough to move around a little bit, but again, he played at Arizona Western, was teammates of Aaron Douglas, who's the number one offensive lineman in the junior college ranks. And Quentin Dial, a player that Alabama signed out of high school. He went over to East Mississippi in scuba. You're watching his high school tape, number 99. He's even gotten bigger and stronger since this video. I mean, you're talking about a, a rangy guy that's got great size, could, could play on the outside or play on the inside. Yeah, he played two years for Buddy Stevens in East Mississippi, Gary, and I know that he, you know, talking to Coach Stevens, said he developed really well over there and he's matured. And he's, he, he does a great job, not only on the field, but off the field, doing everything he needs to do to prepare himself to play in the weight room. So, you know, again, you mentioned his size. Gary's 6'6", 300 plus, and he's an outstanding athlete. Was a Class 6A uh, lineman of the year in the state of Alabama at Clay Chalkville. And, of course, uh, getting back to Douglas, he's already started in the SEC. Yeah. How often that, do you yeah. sign a guy that's, that's already right. proven he can line up and play? And that's what I was saying earlier. He's probably the best offensive tackle available in this class. He started as a redshirt freshman in 2009 against Alabama here at Brian Denny Stadium for Tennessee at right tackle, and then he moved to left tackle in junior college. And, you know, talking to Coach Tom Minnick, the head coach out of Arizona Western, who's put a lot of guys in the NFL, Gary said there's no question that within two years this guy is an NFL player. And about Jesse Williams, who he also coached, he said if Jesse does everything he, he can do, puts himself in the right position, that he's a guy that could be a top ten type pick. Of course, you sign junior college guys with the idea of them coming in and impacting your football team immediately. Not necessarily the case with high school players, particularly a program as well stocked as that as Alabama is, but there are some guys that might get on the field early. Of course, D. Hart already in school. His teammate at Dr. Phillips in Orlando has seen Clinton Dix. Uh, this is a high school safety, but he looks physically ready to play in the SEC right now. You know, when you talk about D. Hart and his ability to possibly get on the field earlier, Gary, might be in the kick return game. Again, I've said it over and over again about him. I think that, you know, he's a guy that in the return games, a lot like Javier Arenas, there you see a big play made in the All-American game and was the MVP in that game. First player to ever run for over 100 yards in the All-American game. And, you know, again, he's, you see him there. I mean, just things that Javier Arenas type things that he can do and I think he's going to be very valuable at some point whether he'll be on the field next year or not we'll have to see. And in Dix you're talking about again a safety that's already close to 200 pounds. Physically he does what you need a safety to do. He can support in the run game. 
He's got great coverage skills there. You see his ability to come up and play pra practically on the line of scrimmage. I mean, this is like a Mark Barron type well, of player here. Even wears number four. I yeah. mean, looks a lot like him. When you watch a lot of his highlights, makes a lot of big plays. Gary's all over the field, very productive player, shows up a lot around the ball. And as you mentioned, a great tackler. He's got the body to get a lot bigger. He's got great athleticism, perhaps the number one safety in the country, certainly one of the best. You mentioned the return game with D. Hart. What about Bradley Silve out of the state of Louisiana? We saw him in the Under Armour All-American game take a kickback 90 yards. This guy can fly. He's a blur, no question about it. Here you'll see that uh, that return right here, 92-yard return in the All-American game. And uh, tremendous speed. Gary was injured through part of his high school career. And it, you know, some people wondered if he still had the speed, but there you see the burst there. And again, he is a guy that can make a fact, be a factor in the return game. He's also an excellent wide receiver prospect. So he's one of the big pickups from the state of Louisiana. All right, just some of the guys that have the potential, the potential. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but to get on the field early at Alabama is quite an accomplishment. The guys like Dehart, Clinton Dix, Sill, they bring some unique talents to the table, so it would not be shocking to see them playing as true freshmen. Well, we're just uh, minutes away from Nick Saban's signing day press conference from the Malmore Athletic Complex. We'll be taking you there live. There you see the podium set up with the uh, bottle of water radiant, waiting on Coach. We will join that as soon as Coach gets to the podium. And uh, we'll have that for you and more as the Tider Insider signing day special returns here from the zone in Bryant Denny Stadium on WBUA. Welcome back to the Tider Insider Signing Day Special. Always a lot of interest in quarterbacks. Alabama signed one. He's already enrolled at UA. Philip Ely from a great program, Tampa, Florida, Plant High School. 6'1", 187 pounds. So you look at the graphic writing, you might say he's a little undersized for this level. But again, he comes from a terrific program. He was a winner in high school, big time. Is he a little bit like Greg McElroy? Uh, well, I was thinking the same thing right when you said that. You know, 31 and three in his high school career at uh, Tampa Plant and led him to a state championship there as a sophomore. And you know, he's an outstanding player, played in a great program, learned a lot about the passing game. And you know, he brings a lot of those things that Greg McElroy did. Maybe not the strongest arm, maybe not the biggest guy, but you know, certainly a guy that knows how to manage a game and is a winner. Let's look at all the January enrollees and, and talk about, as we see the names on the screen, of course, a couple of them coming in from the 2010 class as gray shirts, but talk about the advantage they have going through the off-season conditioning program and then, of course, spring football. Well, first of all, just getting acclimated to being away from home, Gary, that's a big transition and opportunity to, you know, be here and go through the off-season program, get bigger, develop, learn the system, learn how, it, you know, the system in terms of not only on the field but off the field things you have to do to prepare yourself and and what it takes and I think it's a you know it's a big transition for guys especially coming out of high school but it acclimates them to the way Alabama does things it gives them a big jump of course there's a lot of talk about this some uh, detractors say well these young men ought to be able to go through their spring session in high school go to the prom play well they can if they, they want, want to, to. That's what but I'm this saying. is an opportunity that for was going to be my point but you only get to enroll if you're in good standing academically and you graduate early so right. it is a fact of life but it's not going to be for everybody yeah and it's their choice and i think it's a you know it's a great opportunity when when you can bring guys in it not only helps them but it also helps the alabama program all right in state a lot of talk about that as uh, has been tradition in this state alabama has always started in alabama and worked toward the other states and through the years has traditionally dominated in-state recruiting. This year you see the numbers are down in terms of in-state signees. It wasn't a great year in-state, but all five of those young men quality football players. Oh, no question about it. When you look at Brent Calloway, some people think he's the best in the state. He and Enrique Florence, the safety from Valley, who signed with Auburn. Vinny Sinceri is a guy, I mean, he just, he bring, he's very instinctive, Gary. He maybe doesn't have the greatest size for a linebacker, maybe not the fastest guy on the field, but he knows where to be. He's always around the ball. He's a tremendous player. Christian Jones, a guy very productive on the high school level. Good little cornerback safety prospect. Marvin Shin's a guy that's tall. He's got decent speed, pretty good speed. He's faster on the field maybe than he runs a 40, but you know he has a lot of athletic ability. And Danny Woodson just really smooth, does not really exceptionally great at everything, but, but really solid at everything that he does, Gary. Really, really good hands. Let's talk more about Christian Jones from Minor High School in Birmingham. You talked about the lack of size but there's no lack in his playmaking ability. He played running back, he played receiver, he returned kicks, he uh, played on the, in the secondary, he even took some snaps from center. I mean, this is a young man that fits the all-purpose athlete billing very, very well, 
and uh, he's a playmaker. And he's strong. He, he's tough. You know, maybe doesn't, as, as we mentioned about the size, but at the same time, he's a very physical player. Gary doesn't mind, you know, sticking his head in there, making a tackle. And uh, again, he has a lot of athletic ability, and he's going to bring that to the tide secondary. And Alabama's going to need some corners down the road. And, and I think certainly he's a guy with his ability to find the ball is going to be very productive. And as far as Danny Woodson's concerned, he's a legacy. His father, Danny Woodson, played quarterback under Gene Stallings. And, and Woodson was a guy that got on board early. Then there was some talk that he might look around. But he stuck with Alabama. And the thing that you notice in this video as you notice as you watch him run routes is the precision that he runs his routes in the hands. He just doesn't drop no. many balls. No, he doesn't, Gary. He has really great hands. And, you know, as, as you mentioned, he runs precise routes. He's a strong kid. And, uh, you know, he's got, a, he's got a knack for the game. There's no question about that. You can tell that he grew up, you know, around the game quite a bit. Obviously, we mentioned that his dad, Danny Woodson, played here, was a great high school player at, at LaFleur. His, his uncle, Lamar Woodson, was a great high school player, played at Auburn. So, again, he knows the game really well. All right, Alabama loses Julio Jones, and you don't find a, a Julio Jones every year. In fact, Rodney, you might not find another Julio Jones again. But Marvin Shin out of Viger has some of the same physical attributes in terms of size, in terms of toughness and competitiveness. This is a guy who could get on the field potentially as a freshman. Well, we'll see. I think certainly, as you mentioned, Gary, that height is a, is a big thing he has going for him. I think he needs to fill out physically, and he will in terms of, you know, as he grows and, and matures, but he has a lot of athletic ability and he has the ability to go up and catch the ball. And he makes a lot of plays, 19 touchdown catches as a 10th grader. So, again, he has the ability. All right, we talked already about Cyrus Quanjo. That's a fluid situation. I mean, he could change uh, from hour to hour. He committed today on national television on ESPNU to Auburn University, did not sign the letter of intent. And now, according to his dad, they're going to take some time away from it all, not going to do anything today, may even wait a few days. So Cyrus Quanjo, as of this moment, is still uncommitted. And of course, the number one player in the country is uncommitted, and we're not going to hear anything from him today, nor did we expect to. To Davion Clowney from Rock Hill, South Carolina, the consensus number one player in the country is going to announce on February 14th. He said he had narrowed it down to Alabama and South Carolina, but today he says add Clemson into the mix. Yeah, he had a visit there recently. He said he really liked it a lot. And you know, he looked at their signing day list today, was highly impressed because he had played against a lot of those guys and thought that they had an outstanding year. So Clemson's now in the mix, but I still believe it comes down to Alabama and South Carolina, Gary. And you know, it's, it's like I've said all along, it's going to be very hard to get him out of the state of South Carolina. You look back at Marcus Lattimore last year, Auburn thought they had him locked up. Then on signing day, he ends up at South Carolina. And again, I think Jadeveon Clowney, I'm not saying Alabama doesn't have a good shot at him, but I think when all's said and done, it's going to be difficult to get him away from the Gamecocks. Rodney, you and I have been around this business long enough to know you never call anybody a sure thing. Right. And those people that do don't usually last in, in, in the recruiting business. But in terms of his ability, his size, his demeanor, is he about as close as a, a Derek Thomas to looking a sure player? Thing? I mean, just a Derek Thomas looking player. He's obviously got better height, more height than Derek Thomas did. He's a lot bigger than Derek Thomas. But just that first step, the ability to rush the passer, cause havoc. I mean, he looks a lot like Derek Thomas did. All right, we talked uh, about early enrollees and how that's changed the recruiting landscape. Another practice that has uh, become accepted but still a little bit controversial is the practice of gray shirting. Signing a player for one class and then having them wait and defer their enrollment until later on down the road. University of Florida President Bernie Matchin has some so strong words on that exact subject. He says, these schools play roulette with the lives of talented young people. If they run out of scholarships, too bad. The letter of intent signed by the university the previous February is voided. Technically, it's legal to do this. Morally, it's reprehensible. Rodney, your thoughts on no, that? No, I disagree because, you know, sometimes you have a player that really wants to go to a particular school, but the school can't fit him in. The school would love to have him, but they can't fit him into the numbers at that particular year. And if there's an agreement, they both are on the same page. I don't see anything wrong with it. If, if the young man wants to go to that school and wants to wait and delay his entrance, that's up to him. Rodney, Nick Saban is uh, at the monitor. Let's go to the press conference. 